So one of the topics that can appear a little bit intimidating at first is the topic of plant hormones. The most well-known plant hormone is probably auxins. A-U-X-I-N. So auxins are what cause plants to grow towards the light. It's a naturally, a hor a naturally occurring hormone that is present in the plant material, in the parts of the plant material that are closest to the light. And as the plant grows towards the light, the auxins in that part of the plant material start to get used up. So essentially, auxins are a growth regulator that allows plants to intelligently move towards the, the site of their power, light sources, which uh, facilitate their metabolism, their photosynthesis. So how does that relate to the day-to-day -day cultivation of plants? For example, when we prune the top of a plant, when we top it or pinch it, we are removing what we call the apical meristem. And this is where the auxins are present in the highest concentrations. So by removing that, we allow the auxins to be distributed throughout the plant, which causes the multiplication of growing tops. And this can be very beneficial for establishing many tops on a plant so we can have high flower production. Another uh, aspect in which auxins affect our day-to-day -day gardening is when we're rooting. We use synthetic auxins, which are present in the majority of our rooting hormones, to stimulate root growth. Now another popular, uh, popular hormone that gets used is called cytokinin, and generally found in some types of seaweed. Now what cytokinin seaweeds are going to do is cause lateral growth. Cytokin is responsible for bushiness of a plant. So products like Ocean Magic, which contain high levels of cytokinin, can be utilized intelligently by the gardener during certain circumstances. For example, let's say we want to make a whole bunch of cuttings and our mother plant doesn't have enough shoots. We could do a foliar application of a cytokinin seaweed and shoots would come out everywhere. We'd have an abundance of plant material to select for cuttings. Now, a, a situation where we would not want to use a cytokinin product would be, for example, right before we move into the flowering process. If we were to spray a cytokinin product right before we move into flower, we would get so many shoots coming off of the plant material that we would have the biggest pruning job of our life. Otherwise, we would end up with a million little flowers, which is not what any of us are looking for. One of my maxims is don't grow little flowers. We are looking to direct our plants energy to the biggest, most premium AAA flower sites. So we generally cut off small flowers. So we certainly would not want to uh, allow the plant to produce excessive flower sites during the beginning of its flowering period. Another hormone that has been used historically is called gibberellic acid, sometimes referred to as GA. It has over 120 different forms that occur in nature. It is hard to say what forms uh, exactly are in the, some of the products that we use, and it's not always listed on the label. But in general, gibberellic acid will stimulate very intense, powerful vegetative growth. It can be responsible for stem elongation, fruit and flower production, has been used uh, historically to increase flower production. It is known that gibberellic acid is permissible in food products in parts per billion as to <clears throat> how much is actually permissible in other medicinal plant materials has not been established and we don't always know exactly uh, what levels are present in the products that we use containing gibberellic acid. Another hormone that you might occasionally potentially come in contact with and could affect you would be ethylene gas. Now this is nature's death hormone. It's a ripening hormone. So a scenario where this could affect you, for example, let's say you had a veg room 
that started to go into flower and you didn't know why and it had an intake and exhaust and you're looking around and you find that there's an apple tree in your yard that dropped all the apples on the ground and you didn't pick any of them up. All of that rotting fruit would create ethylene gas which could be brought in your intake and actually could force your veg plants to move into the flowering process. So if you happen to have a vegetative garden that keeps going into flower and you're not sure why, you could scour your property, look for any potential sources of ethylene gas in the form of rotting fruit. So there's a brief ex explanation of plant hormones. There are definitely other plant hormones that exist, but those are the most commonly used. Thank you.